Hey guys, Bray Blue RX here. Today we're going to do front brake pads on my Mazda RX-7, second gen version, 1991. And I've got a pair of the Hawk HB155 F.580 brake pads. There's four pads in here, so this will do this will do your front brake system. It's got four pads in here, something that it's not really clear when you buy them, but yeah, you don't need to buy two of these for a front set. You can just buy one box, it's got four pads in it. We'll talk a little bit more about that in the install video. I've got a 3 8 inch impact tool set. This is a Lyle 29200. I got this off of Amazon. Uh, it was more highly reviewed, highly rated than the other ones. A little bit more expensive, but uh, I've had no problems with it so far. It's got five tips and I'll show you how to use this for removing a front brake rotor. I'll add that to uh, the video as well. Once we remove the old brake pads, we need to be able to spread the pistons back in in the caliper in order to put our new pads in. And so this helps with spreading those pistons. This, this will be the first time I'll be using this. I just picked this up also on Amazon. This is a Lang 279. We'll give this a shot. This was uh, 40 bucks on Amazon. so. We'll see how well this works today. I'm looking forward to using it. Make this job a lot easier. One thing with this, though, is that you do need to put put some resistance on it in order for the pads to, in order for these to ratchet. So we'll see how that works out. Next, you need a little mini. There's a little mini power belt sledgehammer. This is for removing um, some pins or some clips, as well as using the impact tool screwdriver for removing the rotors. And then I've got a 17 millimeter half inch deep socket. We'll use this to remove the brake caliper from the system. And then finally we've got or a torque wrench here for putting the lugs back on and then also this is good for using as a breaker bar in order to get off our 17 millimeter bolts from our brake caliper system. So these are the tools that you're gonna need, as well as a needle nose plier, and jack stand, as well as your hydraulic jack. But here are the, here are the minimum tools that you'll need today. We're gonna be getting under the wheel well, and it's kinda of hard to see things under there, so a light headlamp or something would be good. All right, guys, one of the things you'll need to do, e-brake, whoops, danger. E-brake on, pop your hood. Got to get the master brake cylinder cap. Unscrew it because when we spread the brake pads, the liquid has somewhere to go. So we're not going to bleed them. I'm just going to do one at a time. Wheels are chuck. And let's get this thing off the ground. But first, we're gonna to wanna to loosen the tires up, the lugs up a little bit. So let's do that and get this focused. So we just wanna break them loose. We don't wanna unscrew them all the way while they're on the ground. Uh, so let's do that. All right, we got music rolling. We got everything ready, 13 sixteenths socket, deep socket, and I get a text. Nope. So let's just break them loose a little bit. Star pattern. Hey guys, so I just need to do a little audio overlay. Apparently the background song that was playing by the Black Keys got flagged as a copyright infringement, so who would have known that? 
So anyways, I'm just breaking the lugs free uh, just a little bit while it's on the ground. It'll just make it easier to get the tire off once it's up in the air. You don't want to go too crazy, but you just want to start breaking them free. You want to make sure you have your jack stand available and you find the right sweet spot under your car where your jack point is. If you don't know, you check your owner's manual. It's got the jack points for your vehicle. In this situation, it's right kind of a little bit deeper under that front side skirt. There's a lip right there that you can match up. So there you go. And we're going to go back to the video. Thanks, guys. I need to get some lower profile jacks there because I got to jack this thing pretty high up before I can get this in there. Right there. Wow, it's hard working with the camera in the way. Okay, let's get the rest of these things off. So if you notice, I've got a three millimeter spacer on here. That's just because the tires that I bought, these 17 inch Pilot Sports, they've got this lip on them. If you look right here on the inside of the wheel, and it protrudes, and I noticed it was rubbing on my shock right up top there. So, Space it out a little bit just to get some room. Three millimeter seems to do the job. Okay. Okay, if you look at the back of the, where the brake caliper is, there's two right up top here. One up here, the bolt. And then further down, there's a bolt. They're both 17 millimeter. And that's what holds the brake caliper onto the... Okay, there's one right up top here. Right there, that's why we're gonna use a deep socket. We can get some leverage on this thing. These things are sometimes so tight. One up top there. And there's one right down there. Right down here. All right, so we're gonna get to those two first. Yeah, these things can be a real pain. They can be super tight, but it's important because they're actually, it's holding the whole brake system. Wow, it's hard with the camera in the way, but let's get this thing loose. Oh, wrong way, amateur. Trying to do that with a normal shorty socket uh, is pretty hard. This gives me a lot of leverage. Okay. So, we'll go ahead and unscrew these. Get 
she's off. Man, having the right tools just makes things so easy, so much easier. A little bit more. I tried doing this with normal socket set. Man, I'm just fighting with it. So I brought in a shorty half inch socket wrench just to speed things along here. So that just fell off. That was the So I got lucky actually it came off for me, but if you look at the top here. Where the brake line goes to the shock, there's a clip right here. Keeps everything in place. Um, you'll need to remove that with needle nose if uh, once you get everything loose, put it aside. You be real careful with after you get the two bolts undone that you don't bend this brake line. So you wanna slowly lift it off the pad. Not putting too much pressure on the line and pushing the line through the hole and then getting some bungee or something to pull the caliper. I'm gonna do that now. You don't wanna to put too much bend on the, your brake line. So there we go, we got it off. So we're actually gonna, I'm gonna real quick um, show you how you would take these rotors off. So if you notice there's two screws right here. This is where your two Phillips. Don't try using but you just a normal screwdriver. You need to get an impact driver for this. I've got a Lyle 29200 tool set. And find the right head. And these can be tricky if you've never used them before. So you want to find the right head, you want to push it in, and you basically these things, when you push them in, they swivel left or right. So since we're unscrewing this, we want to push in and kind of spin to the left. So this one um, is actually pretty loose, so I didn't use, need to use the impact uh, hammer. And then this one, turn it to the left as you're tapping. And uh, there you go, comes loose. Once you get that off, then you, you take the rotor and you just wiggle it back and forth. And there you go, it'll come right off. And then uh, either get, get your old one resurfaced or if you're installing a new one, um, usually want to match up new pads with uh, a resurfaced rotor or a new rotor. All right, so we did a battery swap. 
I noticed one thing that when I took the spacers off, um, I kind of had the imprint of the rotor mount screws right here. And um, that's something that didn't happen with my OEM brake rotors. So I'm thinking that maybe these just aren't countersunk as deep as uh, the OEM brake rotors. But, you know, this is, uh, looks like just an aesthetic thing. So I'm just going to line it back up. Put it back on. Now we'll move over to the brake pads. Okay, this is where bungees come in handy. Now if we look at our brake caliper, some pins in it. Right up here, and then right down here. But there's also a spring. So what we want to do is Let's go ahead and remove the springs. Let's do the outer spring. Up top. This is where your needle nose will come in handy. Push down and pull out. And then that comes out there. And that comes out over there. And put that aside. Now our pins are free to slide down. Man, the camera's in the way. Trying to work with the camera. Okay. Anyways, you're not going to have a camera in the way, so you'll be able to get these out fairly easy. I need some pliers shortly. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Two pins out. And if you wanted to take a picture of how this setup is, that way you don't forget how the springs go in. That's a little helpful tip as well. Okay. Now we can. Re now that we got the pins removed, we can remove the springs. They just pop out like that. So, kind of have to hold everything from the bottom. It's going to all fall back in. Okay, so the first pad falls out. So I had the OEM pads, they're pretty new, um, but I want to switch over to these Hawk. Um, there are these two backing plates per pad, so um, just keep those together. Okay, now we're going to take our new pads. Okay. 
So the reason that we've got this spreader tool is because once we remove the pads, the inside pistons will basically compress back in. Um, so this is a laying tool. This is the first time I've used it. And um, you just ratchet it and it spreads out the two plates. So, looks like it's a little bigger. I'm wondering if I have to remove the bungee to get it from the bottom. big. So I will um, use whatever meat that I can get into contact with this thing. And in order for this thing to ratchet, it has to have force on it. What the heck? First one. Line it up in the center. That way we can have space for the new pads. C clamps work, but you push one side in and then the other side pops out. Let's get our bungee back. Okay. Blow my nose. Okay, so we take our old backing plates, spacers from the OEM pads, put them back on here, and um, it looks like these pads have this uh, clip on the bottom. I'm guessing this is probably a low pad indicator um, that'll start squealing once your pads get low. These little clips probably scratch on the rotor, so that's uh, my best assumption. So let's put this package back together. Get uh, both the plates for that. Plates for that. Get our get our springs and our pins. Line everything up. Push this spring down, line up the hole. Line up the hole. Push it in. Come on, baby, come on. What's the problem? Backing plates maybe are in alignment. Come on, baby. All right. Let's 
get this thing back in position. It'll work. Let's get the other spring in position. Okay. Okay. It's just like a puzzle. It's just like a puzzle. A puzzle. Yeah, I'm glad I have gloves on. Thing. And working with springs is not always the funnest. With my little hammer. What is the issue here? Okay. It's really just an alignment thing. Just once everything's aligned, everything will slide back into place. Push the pins in. Get your springs back in their homes. Back in your home. Back in your home, my friend. Okay. And then our final pin, this little guy. Turn the pins. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Push that pin in, push that pin in, push that down right in the middle. And double check everything. Pins are good, pads look good. And now we can reassemble. Our brake line in its position, and then we're going to slide this back over the new loop. Now, this is what the spreader is for, so you can get the pads back on the rotor. And then line everything back up. right now. Okay. Of course it'd be easier now. So yeah, do don't put the clip on until after. You want these fairly tight because it holds the whole brake system. 
I'll start with the shorty, half inch. Not too tight on the top, no work the bottom. sockets. Okay. And I put my clip back on. Inspect the brake line. Brake line looks good. Put your clip on the right way, that would help. Man, it's so freaking tight. Get this back, bad boy. Here. I'm gonna have to move the camera, but you get the idea. Just tighten it up pretty good. He was a mechanic, Mazda shop, working on RX-7s for quite a while. Okay. I'll check everything one last time, and uh, we'll put it back in the, we'll put everything back. So when I was double checking everything, one of the little springs was I'll show you. This little spring right here was not over the top of the brake pad. So that's why you double check everything. Everything's tightened. Clips back into place. No, it'll rub, but uh, it can spin. So once we get everything back together and the brakes pumped and working, it'll reset itself. Set for 84, 84 foot pounds torque. So we'll uh, tighten it once it hits the ground. Coming down. Okay, get this 
loosen back up a little bit. Slowly let it back down. And once it hits the ground. Spinning. So we're gonna go a little bit more. There we Car back down to the ground. And then for a break, do the other side. And then put your master brake cylinder cap back on. And you're good to go. All right, guys, so we're all done. We've cleaned up. Um, what you want to do is you want to pump your brake pedal a few times to get the uh, hydraulic fluid back into the lines so um, the pads will get back to the normal position. Um, and then after you do that, go ahead and check your reservoir. Make sure you're filled up and go for a test drive.